Hi again, this is Jeff, your protopi expert answering your protopi questions. Today's question is all about prototyping an SMS code validation screen. You know when you're signing up for something and a code is sent to your phone, then you have to enter those digits into a screen? We're going to prototype that screen. In my Pi here, I have a bunch of text fields. I have some instructions here, and then I have a text field for each of the six digits. This will be a six digit code. I have an error message that will show up if you put in the wrong code. Otherwise, if you put in the right code, we're going to jump over to scene two. Now, your first instinct might be to make all six of these input fields, um, but I haven't done it that way. And the reason for that is the logic gets really complicated to shift your focus from one field to the next as you type and then backwards. Let's say you hit the, uh, the delete key because you've made a mistake and you want to back up and type in a, a new digit. It gets really complicated to manage this back and forth shifting of focus. It's not impossible. You can do it with Protopy, uh, but I'm going to show you an easier way to do it. What we're going to do instead is we're going to have a single input field that the customer types into, and then we're going to pick out the digits of whatever they've typed and plug them into each of these fields using uh, some functions built into Protopy. So the first thing I want to do is I want to add that input field. So I'm going to create a text input field. Any size doesn't matter uh, because this will eventually be hidden. And if I preview this, you're going to see that if I focus this, it's bringing up the alpha keyboard. We don't want that. We want the numeric keyboard. So in order to have the numeric keyboard come up, we need to change its type. And that's down here. Um, choose number from the keyboard options. And the other thing is I'm going to focus this field by default and I never want it to lose focus. So I'm going to turn off these two options under focus out options. So once this field gains focus, it'll never lose focus unless I explicitly say so in my logic. And then lastly, I want this field to have focus immediately when the scene starts. So I'm going to use a start trigger and I'm going to give focus to the input field. And the input field right now is called input one. Let's rename this. We'll call this hidden input because eventually it will be hidden. Now, if I bring up the preview for this, you're going to see I get the numeric keyboard. And as I type, digits are going into that field. This is going to be a six digit code but I can type in as many digits as I like in this field. I'd like to limit this to only be six digits when I type. And we can do that with a little bit of logic in here. I'm going to use a detect trigger and all of our logic will be done under this detect. And I'm going to detect a change in whatever's been typed in this field. So I'm going to choose the hidden input field and I want to use its text property. That's what I want to do a detect on. And let's rename this hidden inputs.text. And the first condition I'm going to put in here is when the length of whatever's been typed in is greater than six characters. So let's use a condition. And I need to use a formula here because I'm going to use a function. And the function I'm going to use, you can find on Protopie's website. If you go under the learn tab and then documentation and then formulas down here, you can see there is a, an option called functions, and this gives you all of the built-in functions in Protopy. We're going to use some text functions in today's lesson here. Uh, the first one we're going to use is the length function, and the length just gives us the number of characters in a bit of text, and we care about the number of characters that's been typed into our text field. So let's go back to our Pi here and in our formula. Oops, I'm going to type length. And I want the length of the text property of the hidden input field. And anytime you want to use a, a layer on the stage, you can just hit this plus and it'll give you a list of all the items here. I'm going to choose hidden input. And then to get a list of its properties, press the dot character. And you're going to see text is one of them. You could choose any of these, but we care about the text property. And then when you're using a function, you need to close it with the bracket in here. Okay, so when the length of that is greater than six characters, so I'm going to choose greater than and the value of six, I want to do something. And in this case, I want to exclude anything that's been typed after the sixth character. And for this, I'm going to be using the left function. And what this will do, this will give us a number of characters from the left end of a bit of text. So when we look at this, uh, the source will be the, the text property, the input field. And the second property is the number of characters that you want. And we only ever want the first six characters of it. So anytime anything other than six characters has been entered, we are going to cut off anything after the sixth character. 
So let's go back to our condition here and let's add in a text response. And for the hidden input, we're going to use a formula here. And I'm going to use the left function. And the source text will be the current text property of the hidden input field. Oops, not a comma, we want a dot. That's good. And then to separate one parameter from the next, we use a comma. And the second parameter is the number of characters we want, and that is the first six characters. All right, let's test this out. If I preview this and I start typing, two, three, four, five, six, I can get six. If I try to put in another one, it doesn't let me. It just gets cut off. I can still back up, though, and I can put in other characters, but it only lets me ever put in six characters, no more than that. Okay, that's our first one. Now, the next thing we'd like to do is, as I type, I'd like to take the first digit of what's been typed and pop it in this text field. The second digit, pop it in this one. Third one in this one, etc., etc. And we're going to use more conditions for this. But because our logic is going to get a little bit complicated underneath this detect, it's a good idea to name things. So in this case, our condition is greater than six characters. Also, what I want to do is every time the input text changes. I want to clear out all these fields and rewrite them. And what that will do is that makes sure that, let's say I backspace, it makes sure that whatever field uh, would have been filled before when I backspace, it gets cleared. Whenever you have conditions in a trigger, anything underneath a condition will get executed only when that condition is true. However, anything you put above all of your conditions, so if I add in a response here, and let's say I want to add in a text response, this will always execute whenever this trigger fires. The first thing I want to do is I want to clear all of the text fields. So I'm going to clear digit one. And when I want to clear it, I need to give it what's called empty text. And you have to use a formula for this. So my formula is two quote characters, nothing in between. And then I'm going to duplicate this. So let's rename this clear digit one. And let's duplicate this five more times. I'm going to do this with Command-D or Control-D on Windows. One, two, three, four, five. So now I've got six that all do the same thing, and let's modify them for each digit. So this will be clear digit two, this for digit three, this for digit four, this for digit five, and this for digit six. And let's rename these as well, so that way the labels correspond to what's going on. It's a really good idea to always rename your triggers and responses. As your logic grows more complicated, naming them really helps you understand what's going on at a glance. Okay, so anytime we, we type, it's going to clear all six of these fields. Now we'd like to fill these in one at a time. I'm going to use more conditions for this. So if our condition and remember, we've got the, the length of this, so we're going to use the length again. This time, we're going to test for if the length is at least one character. So if the length, we're going to use a formula here, plug in the length. If the length is greater than zero, so at least one character, we know that we have one character fill in in this first box. So again, we're going to use a text response here. And I'm going to say, write digit one, because that's what this is going to be doing. And we're going to use that left function again. So we're going to use a formula for the text response. And the formula will be left. And we're going to use the first character of hidden input. So hidden inputs text property, comma, one. So I only want one character. And this should work if we type in Okay, didn't work. Why didn't it work? And that is because we, instead, we wrote to the wrong thing. We want to write to the digit one field, not the hidden input field. All right, so now if I type in here, okay, good. So the first digit goes in the first box. That's great. And if I backspace, remember, because we added all the clears to the start of this trigger, if I backspace one, that disappears. So our display is working for the first digit. Now we got to fill out the rest. OK, so when we want to fill out digits uh, 2 through 6, this gets a touch more complicated. It's another condition. 
and we're going to say when the length of the, and let's just copy this again, so when the length of the hidden input fields is greater than one, so we're at least two characters, so greater than one, uh, we're going to write digit two. So let's copy this and paste it here. We'll rename this to say digit two, and we set our target to digit two. Now in this case, this is going to give us the first character. We want the second character. Now the interesting thing is if I change this to two, this is going to give us the first two characters of that text field, which gets us part of the way there, but it's not quite right. And if I preview this and I type in one, two, you're gonna see it tries to put in one and two in this field. What I'd like to do is now take the last character of what I've just extracted here. So I've extracted the first two characters, I'd like the last character of what I've just extracted there. And much the same way as we've got the left function to get characters from the left side, we have a right function to get characters from the right side. And what we can do is we can combine these two functions. So we've got the left two characters, I want the first character from the right of whatever this is. So let's add in at the beginning, right. And I'm going to say I want the first character from the right of the first two characters from the left. And this will give us the second digit. Now when I preview this and I type in one, two, two goes in there, one goes in there, and that's working. And again, if I backspace, it's clearing those out because of our clears that are in here. Now the rest of the conditions are just a matter of copying and pasting this, or we can duplicate Command-D or Control-D on Windows. And when it's greater than two characters, I'm going to write digit three. And I'm just going to make a small modification to my formula. And I'm going to take the first three characters. And I want to make sure I'm targeting digit three. Duplicate this again. And this will be right digit four. When our condition is greater than three characters, and we'll change this to be the first four characters from the left. Say OK to that. Digit four. Duplicate this. We're going to write digit five. This will be digit five. We'll change this to five. And our condition is when it's greater than four characters. And the last one is when we're greater than five. Control D again. It's greater than five. This will be for the sixth character. Write digit six. Target digit six. And we'll change this to six characters from the left. Now we should be able to input our entire code. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And if I backspace and I do eight, seven, five, three, two, six. They go in as we do. And then if I try to put in a seventh character, it doesn't accept it. Okay, so now uh, we've got our code entry working. Now what we'd like to do is validate that we've got the right code. We could add in more conditions into, into here, but that gets a bit more complicated. So I'm going to show you a technique that I like to use, and this is using send and receive to separate one bit of logic from another. I'm going to use a receive trigger to accept a message. We're going to call this validate. And I like to rename these validate. And I'm going to do all of my validation in this last, uh, in this trigger instead of putting it underneath here. Because if I were to do this, then I have to add in extra conditions in here. And again, this gets a bit more complicated. So this is a good way to separate one bit of logic from another. All of this handles text entry. This will handle validating our code. So what we want to do is our condition, if the hidden inputs text property, if it equals whatever we put in here is our valid code, and let's just make that one, two, three, four, five, six. If it equals our valid code, then we are going to jump to scene two. So jump scene two, and we'll use the slide in transition as always. And then we'll have a second condition for when it's incorrect. So condition, select the hidden inputs text property, does not equal one, two, three, four, five, six. 
then in this case, I'm going to show that error message. So opacity of the error message will change to 100. Okay, so let's preview this. If we put in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, okay, not happening because we haven't actually told Protopy what to do when we hit that six digit. We haven't told it to go and jump over here and execute the stuff that's here. So what we need to do is we need to add a send on the six digit. We're going to do a send to the current scene and the message will be validate. Let's make this uppercase to match our message. Okay, so now let's try this again. We preview this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Great, code is accepted. And let's start this again. Let's put the, the incorrect code. One, two, three, four, five, seven. Incorrect code, try again. Okay, a couple of things we want to happen when the incorrect code goes in. We want to clear these boxes so that you can try it again. And then when I start typing again, I'm going to clear this message so that way it disappears until I've gotten to the sixth digit. So let's do this. This is condition correct code. And this is condition incorrect code. So we're going to use a text response of the hidden input. And again, if I want to give it uh, empty text, I need to use a formula. And my formula is two quotes. Okay, let's preview this again. One, two, three, four, five, seven. Wrong code. Now you're going to see I cleared the text field. And because I cleared the text field, our detect fired and it cleared these digits. And then the last thing I want to do, so if we go back to the preview, um, I don't want that uh, code to continue to show on the screen, or the, the error message to, con uh, to show on the screen as I continue to type. So the second I start typing again, I want that error message to go away. So in our, um, in our detect, if it's at least one character, and that's our first condition here, so greater than zero, at least one, we are going to use a opacity response on the error message and set it back to zero. So the second I've put in one character, it is going to clear that error message. So let's preview this again. One, two, three, four, five, seven, wrong code. And if I start typing again, one, there we go, the message goes away. Two, three, four, five, six. And there we go, code's accepted. Now you may wanna do just a small little tweak on here and you may wanna delay it just a touch when you put that six character in before you run the validate. Uh, and this will allow you to see what character has been typed into that sixth field here. So when I when I have my send here, this is sending immediately when I type the sixth digit. And that is controlled by the timeline over here. You can see this dot is perfectly in line with this. If I wanted to del delay this by a split second, I can use the start delay property here. And let's say we want to delay it by half a second. So 0 0.5. And now when I preview this and I type in, one, two, three, four, five, seven. You see, it, it just paused for a second before it showed us the, the, the code was wrong. And if I do it again, two, three, four, five, eight, incorrect code. There we go. If I put in one, two, three, four, five, six, there you go, same thing. Because the validation uh, is delayed, you get just a brief, brief, brief time to show what digit's been in there. And we can make that a little bit shorter. If you think half a second is a bit too long, we can change this to a quarter of a second. And now when we preview this, one, two, three, four, five, seven. Yeah, I think that's a little bit better. One, two, three, four, five, six. Great, code accepted. Now the very last thing we'd like to do is make sure that this input field is actually hidden. We don't want to see it. Uh, and that's a really easy thing to do. We're just going to drag it so it's off screen. So now when I preview this, that input field gets focused even though it's not on screen. And as I type one, two, three, four, five, seven, I get the error message. And I'm gonna try again, one, two, three, four, five, six, and everything works. And there you go. This is how you prototype an SMS validation screen. Easy as pie. If you've run into a snag with one of your pies and you'd like to ask us for help, please check out the link in the description below. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.